I'm Bill Hoffman, uh, Communications Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology, here with Dr. Henry Balfour. Dr. Balfour has graciously agreed to be part of our Legends in Pathology series. Uh, so let me start at the beginning. Uh, Dr. Balfour, where did you grow up? I grew up in Ridgewood, New Jersey, which is in Bergen County, basically about as far north as you can get before you get to New York State. And uh, I could actually see, in the wintertime, the George Washington Bridge from my house, which was very cool. <laughs> and where did you go to college? Uh, I stayed in New Jersey, and I'm a Princeton Tiger. The Princeton Tiger. And why did you decide on medicine? I have absolutely no idea. I liked English, and I liked biology, and I guess maybe it was a coin toss, but uh, really, uh, in the long run, I made the right decision because biology was a little more compelling than reciting Shakespeare. And what medical school did you attend? Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons, and then after that I came here for an internship but I was one of the unfortunate doctors back in 1966 who did not get deferred to finish all of my medical training. And so I had a decision to make as to where to go for the one year that I was deferred instead of the full extent of my residency and some specialty training. So I chose to go back to New York to Babies Hospital where I did a residency of one year and then, thank goodness, I was assigned to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. And that's really where I got my, uh, myself into research because a wonderful man by the name of Gil Schiff, who was part of Cincinnati Children's, and also at that time it was called the Gamble Institute, got me interested in the laboratory and specifically in the virus laboratory. And you had a fellowship as well? Yes. After my stint at Wright-Patterson, I came to the University of Minnesota and I did a fellowship in pediatric infectious diseases. And then I was uh, appointed as assistant professor of laboratory medicine and pathology because the director of the medical lab at that time had left to go to Utah. And I've never left. So I'm unique in the sense that my entire professional career has been at the University of Minnesota. And I'm very proud of that, and that's why I'm wearing University of Minnesota gear. And why was it that you decided that research was the area that you wanted to pursue, and how has that uh, experience evolved over the, over the decades? I would say that my first experience with uh, Gil Schiff in Cincinnati was so positive uh, in terms of getting me excited to look at changes that the viruses caused in various cell culture, culture systems and uh, I just pursued it from, from there. And what happened here was very interesting. When I came back from the Air Force to do my fellowship training, there was no clinical virology service. So I actually had to start it up from scratch, which I did in 1972, and uh, we just expanded from there. The, the, the most, uh, how should I put it, active area that we were in was a transplantation because in those days, the immunosuppression was not sufficient to, to, uh, to allow the host to fight off viral infections, particularly infections with the herpes group of viruses. And that's what I've concentrated my career on, the herpes group of viruses, and recently on Epstein-Barr virus, which is the cause, as you know, Bill, of uh, infectious mononucleosis, but it's also been implicated in cancers such as Hodgkin lymphoma, and autoimmune diseases, especially multiple sclerosis. And you were a pioneer in the field of clinical virology. Uh, and how has clinical virology been represented in, in departments of pathology and laboratory medicine around the country in academic medicine? I think we've seen a huge evolution in clinical virology from sort of a biology or almost a florist approach, grow things, to molecular techniques to identify pieces of the virus and actually to quantify the virus. So the biggest change uh, in virology has been from recognizing the disease in the first place to actually being able to see how much virus is present in the host and how that relates to the severity and the opportunity to recover from disease. How do you see some of the new tools in molecular biology? I'm thinking of genomics, 
uh, and of gene editing and some of these uh, amazing new technologies. How do you see them uh, being uh, put to use in the field? I think the biggest piece is going to be to identify host factors, particularly immunologic host factors, that predispose a person to a certain infection. I mean, we know right now some of them, but there's a big mystery out there as to why there are people, for example, who contract the Epstein-Barr virus for the first time and have no symptoms at all, and why somebody else has chronic mono and suffers for years and years and years. I think the story there is in the genetics of the immune response, and then hopefully the molecular techniques will allow us to identify biomarkers to be able to track the infection from start to finish. Talk about the uh, Epstein-Barr virus uh, um, uh, vaccine project that you have led here at the University of Minnesota. Right. Uh, as an infectious disease person, I have always felt that to prevent a disease is a lot better than to try to treat it. And in fact, for many viral diseases, treatments are only palliative or semi-effective. And so starting in about 2007, let's say, we have been working on developing an Epstein-Barr virus vaccine, a vaccine that would be a preventative or a prophylactic vaccine. The thought being that the most obvious benefit the vaccine could confer would be prevention of infectious mononucleosis. But again, uh, I see this virus as implicated in a range of tumors, particularly tumors of the white blood cell system, and also uh, a trigger for autoimmune diseases, especially multiple sclerosis. And so I think that vaccine has the potential to be one vaccine producing many cures. Bill, uh, one thing I want to say, perhaps in closing, is that education is really our primary business. And I take delight in having students from freshmen all the way up to postdocs in my laboratory. And I would really appreciate having a couple of them talk about their experiences here at the University of Minnesota in research. I'm talking with Lauren Duvall, who is an undergraduate researcher in our laboratory. And I just thought it would be good to emphasize that we have opportunities for research for freshmen all the way up to postdocs. And Lauren, why did you choose virology in the virology lab? You know, I really think I chose virology. I saw you speak at one of my classes and I just thought it was really interesting how we were doing direct research with students here on campus and seeing how it was gonna have um, you know, a clinical health impact and an impact on actual care. And I thought that that was so interesting and just made me really passionate to go into this line of research. And we've been fortunate to have you for essentially four years, mm -hmm. and we'd love to have you for four more. Yes. But what are you thinking of doing ultimately in your career? So I think that the next step for me is going to be getting my master's in public health, hopefully in epidemiology, and then from there, um, continue to do research, maybe apply to medical school in a few years, but stay with this field. Excellent. I'm talking with Anna Stepanova, who is an undergraduate researcher in our laboratory. Anna, I'd like to ask you, why did you choose to do research in our virology laboratory? Sure. So um, I got the opportunity to apply for this position when the College of Biological Sciences sent out that you were looking for undergraduate researchers. And I read the description of what uh, work the, re the lab was doing and it really applied to what I was studying already. So that's microbiology and public health. And I thought that the vaccine development research that you guys were doing was really interesting and super pertinent to what I wanted to do with my future. So I just figured I'd take a shot. <laughs> and in fact, what do you plan to do with your future? Yeah, so I wanna go to medical school. Um, I wanna ideally work with my hands a lot, so I'm interested in obstetrics, maybe surgery, we'll see where I land up. Very good. Yeah. 